Current research shows that more than half of sexually active men and women are infected with HPV at some time in their lives. New screening technologies, vaccines, and updated guidelines have brought many changes in recent years to the fields of HPV research and cervical cancer prevention. For insight on these and other related topics, we turn to Dr. Hunter Hansfield, a physician, veteran researcher, and expert in the field of sexually transmitted infections. Dr. Hansfield is with the University of Washington Center for AIDS and STDs, and for 25 years, he directed the STD control program for the Public Health Department in Seattle. Dr. Hansfield is also a member of the American Social Health Association's Board of Directors. Women should start having passengers at about age 21. It used to be said age, age 18 or soon after becoming sexually active, but 21 is the direction that most guidelines are going. The main use of HPV testing is as a supplement to a pap smear. With a pap smear, you look at abnormal cells uh, or look for abnormal cells under the microscope that could indicate cancer or more commonly precancerous changes. Adding HPV tests to that in some cases can provide guidance to the patient and her doctor about follow-up testing and additional tests that may be necessary uh, in case management. In women over age 30, a higher proportion of positive results are positive because the woman's been infected for many years. And it is those prolonged infections that are most likely uh, or most frequently associated with later development of precancerous changes or cancer itself. Women who are over 30 uh, should have HPV testing routinely uh, along with their pap smears. Um, Younger women may occasionally require HPV testing as well, especially if an initial pap smear has certain abnormalities. In younger women, the presence of HPV is so frequent that it becomes less useful. That is, a woman who has a positive HPV test at, say, age 22 is statistically very likely to clear that infection before it ever causes any important problems that could lead to future cancer or that sort of thing. Well, first, the current tests have been standardized for collecting specimens from the cervix and moist tissues. So the reliability of testing when collected from dry penile skin is, uh, is a potential issue. But equally important, uh, the large majority of HPV infections are asymptomatic, remain that way, and clear up on their own without ever causing serious health problems, either for the men or for the most part of their sexual partners. There's really nothing that can be done in terms of treating, or for that matter, counseling behavior change in men who have positive HPV tests versus those who do not. Well, two vaccines are available, one of which covers the two HPV types called HPV 16 and 18 that uh, are responsible for about 70% of cervical and anal cancers. Uh, the other vaccine covers four types, the same two that we just discussed, but also the two types called HPV 6 and 11, which cause about 90% of genital and anal warts. The vaccines are indicated uh, up to age 26 for all sexually active people, and even before people become sexually active, down to as early as 9 uh, years old in the case of one of the two vaccines, and I think 11 year old, years old uh, for the other. Uh, HPV infections of the types that the vaccine cover are often acquired so early once someone becomes sexually active that the maximum protection uh, occurs if immunization is done before someone has the first sexual exposure. The HPV vaccines are just as safe as just about any other vaccine we use, although there have been media stories uh, about individual rare side effects, for the most part, those are probably coincidental and not related to the vaccine. As with any injection, there's the potential for a little bit of discomfort or soreness at the injection site, but other than that, these vaccines are essentially harmless and uh, cause no more side effects than influenza vaccines or common childhood vaccines. Syncope is simple fainting that occurs uh, under stress and it occurs in a certain proportion of people undergoing any medical procedure that has a little bit of pain or emotion associated with it. 
it's no more frequent with HPV vaccines than with any other injection or vaccine. If you have questions about HPV vaccines, visit www.ashastd.org to learn more.